I've been playing Counter-Strike my whole life as a hobby, and I actually started playing competitively when I was 13, but not very seriously, and I didn't have much time to invest. Playing with the current pro players at the time and them acknowledging my ability when I was like 13 or 14 years old kind of gave me the confidence to continue pursuing, uh, pursuing it as a potential career path and like feeling that I was good enough to make it. I would play in little online tournaments and sure, maybe I won a couple hundred dollars, but that's not something I could consider like, oh, I can make a living off this now. That was just like, oh, it's some extra pocket change. And then I could see the pro league was developing and, and big orgs were coming in and picking up teams. And I was like, all right, this is like a chance to really do something with this. Well, last man standing is going to be Roka coming around from Truckside and Roll. Oh my God, Relics, what a beast. A lot of people um, think that being an esports pro is all sunshine and, and rainbows, but uh, there's a lot of stress involved. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, even when it comes to job security, you know, you could be benched, you could be cut and, you know, and replaced at, at really at any time. And for all you know, that could be the end. People don't see the, the behind the scenes when you're putting in hundreds and thousands of hours and spending months and months and the team isn't improving and you guys aren't really winning anything. And then there's expectations and pressure from the org where it's like, hey guys, we need to see some results. So, you know, we're gonna look at making changes. I've seen him show off a lot of skills and I've seen him have very good games against very good opponents, but he's very rarely been on a team in Counter-Strike that lasted longer than a year. Whether it was a new team, whether it was one player leaving and someone else coming in, they were never able to stay together long enough to move on to that next step of team evolution. I like to think I'm a person that's very versatile. I'll, I'll kind of shape myself to do what's needed for the team. So I don't really mind change. You know, I understand change is just like a natural thing. Like it's not gonna work out sometimes. You know, it might've just been you. You didn't mesh well with the four other players. You weren't the type of player they needed, whatever it might be. Uh, some of the time it's like I would change and then I would change again. Like I would be doing what the org's asking of me and no one is telling me anything. I'm not being told like, hey, you really need to work on this. Or like, there's nothing being said. It's like, okay, we're gonna try you like in this role. Okay, I'll do it. Like, and I'm doing my best to my ability whatever I'm needing to fulfill for the team. And then it's like, without a word, it's like, all right, we're bringing this other guy in, we're moving you again. And then I do that. And then after a couple of weeks, it's like, okay, you're going on the bench. And it's like, I've played three different roles in a month and now I'm being benched. Like, does that really feel like I was given a fair chance? In the end, it doesn't matter. It is what it is, it's reality. I, I'm not gonna argue, I can't argue with the CEO and be like, no, nah, you put me back on that team right now. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll look to the future, I guess. You kind of always knew what you were getting when you put relics on a team. It was always gonna be a guy that was pretty good with utility, pretty good at clutching, but he's always gonna be that last man alive or maybe the last one or two guys on a team. He always had a lot of skill and he always had a good eye for the game. He had a good mind for the game, but it felt like he was a little bit one dimensional. He would always be in the back of the pack. And sometimes in Counter-Strike, that means he missed out on opportunities. It means that maybe because he wanted the round to develop around him a little bit more, that he maybe missed an opening. I'm very used to making sacrifices um, from CS, playing support roles and, and not really, not trying to be the shining star, but helping your star shine brighter. Um, I think it's kind of better for me in Valorant than in CS, because in CS, if I'm the support player, if I'm the guy pop flashing or throwing smokes, I'm always doing that. I'm always sitting at the back, throwing the smokes or throwing the flashes for the guy to, to frag in the site. But in Valorant, depending on my agent, I can play a little bit more aggressive or I could be the guy that's that's swinging into the site. And sometimes I can also be supporting at the same time. You know, as they say, it's a cliche saying, but it's about the name on the front of the jersey, not the name on the back. So really, as long as we're winning, as long as we're succeeding, as, if I'm not getting recognition, if no one's like praising me for my support flashes and my smokes, it doesn't really matter because I know that my teammates know what I'm doing for them. And, you know, we know that we're helping each other. Oh, oh, oh my let's go God. let's go starting out strong yeah. valor is almost uh the perfect it's the perfect game at the perfect timing for a lot of these a lot of these csgo players we're lucky that we have so many options and and being a cs player i guess uh pretty fortunate that valorant is such a similar game for us to transition to it'd be a lot harder if you know if i was a league player and i was like i'm gonna go pro in valorant with like no fps experience you know yeah it's it's night and day this fresh start, it's kind of that perfect thing for an obsessive gamer like CSGO players. So for someone like Relic switching over to Valorant, I think it's gonna be just easy. It's almost like going back to when you were 15. You can't wait to play when you get home from school. You, you're gonna skip your homework. You're gonna not sleep, you know, and, and game until 3 a.m. and not think twice about it. So yeah, I mean, I feel lucky. I feel 
uh, grateful to have an opportunity in this game with such a big org, and I hope that we can, you know, turn some heads and impress them. Sometimes you're popping off, sometimes you're not. Looking for quick and easy updates on all things Cloud9? Well, now you can with the brand new Cloud9 app located in the App Store. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.